Hello everybody, this is Mr. Boggs. Uh, today we're going to talk about logging into Charms for the first time, as well as troubleshooting how to reset a password and um, updating our info in Charms. So you're going to go ahead and type in Charms to your search browser, um, click login, and right here make sure you go to the parent, students, and members tab. You're gonna school code is gonna be Clovis HS Music, and that is the same every time. Once you are in, you're gonna see this screen. You're gonna go to Student Area Password. So if you've never logged in before, your Student Area Password is gonna be your ID number. So type in your ID number, and then you are gonna get this screen. So what it's gonna do is gonna have you reset your own password to something that you can remember. So type in your old password, which is your student ID, and then type in a new password. Okay, and you can even add a hint. Oh, let me try that one more time. All right, now once we're in, uh, this is your dashboard, and we're going to go and update our info first. Once you are in the student info, what we need all students to do is update and make sure that your spelling of your name is correct. Your first and your last name. If you have a middle name, you can include that as well. And this has to be your actual full legal name, not a nickname, but what you are actually known for under Clovis Unified. Next, you're going to go ahead and update your home address. If you live in a household where you are shared between multiple families, go ahead and put an address primarily that is associated to your contact. Uh, we don't use the address very often, so um, any address will be fine. Once you have that updated and entered, you wanna make sure the city and the zip code is correct. You wanna go into your personal cell phone number. This is the student's cell phone number. And we wanna make sure that you include the area code as well as if you have an extension or not, most of you will not. But having a cell phone is important because we do send out text messages using our charm system as well. If you have another cell number, you wanna include that as well and a or a home phone number. The home phone number should be the second number. Your cell phone should be your first number. Next up, it's the student's email. So this is the email that the students check primarily. If it's your CUSD account, a personal Gmail, Hotmail, anything else. But this is the email that goes directly to the students and not the parents. Underneath the email, you have the personal instrument tab. If you own your own personal instrument, we want you to click on the tab Enter the instrument type, if it's trumpet, violin, flute, whatever it may be, followed by the brand and followed by the serial number. If you are using a school instrument, you do not need to complete this part, only if you own a personal instrument. We want to make sure that this information is documented for your safety and for our safety as well. On the other half of this page, we want you to indicate the correct sex, either male or female. For us, it helps us when we have to travel or do anything else, it helps us associate uh, how many uh, boys or girls do we have traveling with us. In the, under the locker and the combination, if you had something in there from previous years, please just go ahead and delete that and leave it blank as that will get updated when you are assigned a new locker and a combination. Under t-shirt size, we want you to indicate the student's t-shirt size. If you're extra small, you're gonna put XS. If you're small, you will put S. If you're a medium, you will put M. If you are a large, you will put L. If you're an extra large, you will put XL. If you're a double extra large, XXL, triple extra large, XXXL, and so on and so forth. Under email, if you have another secondary student email, let's say you have a CUSD and a personal email, we wanna include your second email there. This is not necessary, but helpful, as well as any additional phone numbers that we may need to contact you in the event of an emergency or anything else. Once you've completed this and updated everything, you wanna to go to the upper right hand of your screen and click the update button. That will instantly update all of your information. Once all the student's information is updated, you wanna go down to either add an adult or update the adult. If you are a returning member, 
you will have already adults in there. You wanna just make sure everything is updated. If it's a new adult, if you're an incoming student or new to the program, or we are adding a new family member in that is responsible for you, we're going to go ahead and update this information. First and last name, as well as a work number, if applicable, a home phone number, including zip code, I mean area code, a cell number, as well as an address where that family member lives, city, state, and zip code. Uh, relationship to the uh, student, if your mom, an aunt, a grandmother, anybody at all that is responsible for the care of the student in our program. And then an email. You can enter in up to two emails for each adult um, in order for you to receive information about our program as well. The occupation and skill is not necessary. You can complete it if you want to. However, it is not necessary at all. And lastly, each parent uh, will need to uh, double check the interest board. Under the interest board, it has options of how you can help the program and volunteer. Uh, we are, you know, if you work for the district, you want to indicate that you are a CUSD employee. It lets us know that you are badged. If you uh, can help in the classroom, if you drive a truck and you have a class A license and you're willing to help out, there's a lot of different ways. If you're good with graphic design, video or media, or can sew or have any kind of skill, go ahead and click your interest because it helps us also communicate with parents when the need arises and to see if you are available to help out the program. Once you've updated under the adult, current adult or new adult, you wanna go and update that as well. You can add as many adults as you want uh, under each student. Um, however, we wanna make sure that we have at least one adult per every student so that the parents are receiving the information and the student is receiving the information. Once you've updated all that, on the top of your uh, um, charms, office assistant, are the home app, the uh, finance app, there's also communicate app and how to email us. So you will be using this program to look at events coming up, how to volunteer, how to email any of the lead staff members, a lot of our documents like um, drill or MP3s or rudiments or exercises will get posted on this website as well as the app. We encourage you to download the app. Uh, the app is called the Charms Blue Student app and allows you to also have access to that as well. However, in order to get access to the app, you must be able to complete this part um, using a computer, a desktop, uh, or an iPad. And then through here, you'll have access to the recording studio, be able to check your finances, your fundraisers, be able to pay um, online using PayPal. Um, and so we use this program in addition to Google Classroom and other programs to be able to communicate and to keep our parents informed.